Hello, hello, great 12s. Welcome back to the channel Science Therapy, hosted by the one and only science therapist O Abudiwa Sos O Kobela Wemets. And without any further ado, let's look at this question that we have here. Rrrra. Okay, so we have question three on VPM, which is vertical projectile motion. So uh, let's see what it says. It says a 25 gram ball is thrown vertically upward. The ball leaves the thrower's hand at 1.3 meter above the ground with an initial velocity of 7.27 meters per second. On its way down, the ball bounces off a balcony at a velocity of 3 meters per second before being caught at its maximum height after the bounce. Ignore all effects of friction as well as any horizontal motion of the ball. Right. Then 3.1 says define the term projectile. So for that, we're just going to go ahead and uh, pick the definition here. So make sure that any definition that you have is caps supported. Right. So it has to come specifically from your caps document. Now, this is how you're expected to define projectile. You say is an object upon which the only force acting is the force of graphite. So make sure you define it exactly like that. Then 3.2 says calculate the maximum height above the ground that the ball will reach after it was thrown in the air. Right. So if we have to go back and look at the formulas, we have uh, the equations of motion in a vertical plane. These are the formulas that we have. Now let's go here and collect the data because remember the choice of formula will be determined by the data that you have. We have our V initially 7.27 meters per second. We are told that this board is being thrown to a maximum height. Right. So we know that uh, the velocity at the maximum height is zero meters per second. But if we are starting here all the way to the maximum height, the maximum, the velocity at the maximum height now becomes our final velocity. Now, this ball has had been thrown vertically upwards initially. So let's take upward as positive. If we take upward as positive, our acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second square. And then uh, what are we looking for? We are looking for delta y. So we're going to go and choose a formula that's going to accommodate all of this. Right. So let's go to the formulas. This is what you do. So you are looking for a formula that will have all that right so what is it uh, we are looking for vi check we are looking for vf uh, and then a and delta y so which formula is most suitable for the calculation there we can all agree that it is definitely a formula number two here and then let's go and use that so we have vf squared vf squared is equals to vi squared plus 2a delta y and then what's our vf squared that's zero and then vi 7.27 square plus 2 and then here we have 9 point negative 9.8 and then delta y so when we press all this this will give us a value of 52.8529 and then this is negative 19.6 delta y. We can take the negative 19.6 over to the side. It will be positive 19.6 delta y is equals to 52.8529. Then divide both sides by 19.6. Then our delta y will be equals to 2.70 meters, rounded off to two decimal places, of course. But then remember, here we are told maximum height above the ground. So note that the 2.70 meter is not above the ground. This is uh, the height. This is the height from this point here above uh, the thrower's hand all the way to the maximum height. We are looking for the height uh, above the ground so starting from here all the way uh, to that point so in order to have this height above the ground we can almost see what we are supposed to do here we take the 2.7 and then add it to the 1.3 here then this will give us a height of four meters right so the height above the ground is four meters which if you can check this is the height of the this is the height all the way from here and to this point right it is not the height of the building 
it is not the height of the building and then uh, let's move let's move let's move Okay, 3.2.2 says, uh, calculate the time that the ball takes until it bounces on the balcony for the first time. So if we have to uh, consider the journey, this is the journey starting from here and then going to the maximum height and then coming back uh, from the maximum height until it reaches the balcony. So this is the journey that we are focused on. Now, if we can check this, our V initially is still 7.27 .7 meters per second. But our V finally, uh, let's check what they said above here in the statement. They said on its way down, the ball bounces off a balcony at a velocity of 3 meters per second. So this 3 meters per second is the velocity in which it bounced off the balcony uh, with, right? But are we told the the velocity in which it hits the balcony with? We are not told. But then considering that they said ignore all effects of friction as well as any horizontal motion of the ball, this in a way tells us that uh, the the collusion of the ball and the balcony is elastic. It's an elastic collusion. So that means no kinetic energy is lost. Therefore, in other words, even the velocity will still remain the same. So the velocity in which it bounced off the balcony with is the same velocity in which it hit the balcony with. But then note that uh, the velocity in which it hits the balcony with has a downward direction. We took upward as positive. So that means our V finally needs to be negative 3 meters per second so it it hits the balcony at a velocity of ne negative three meters per second and then bounces off the balcony at a velocity of positive three meters per second right then now we have vi we have vf our acceleration remember it's still negative 9.8 meters per second square because this does not depend on the direction change for for as much as we commit that in the first question we will take up what is positive. That means uh, that should be used throughout the question. So if we choose to answer the very first question that says calculate using upward as positive, that means we must answer every question that follows using A as negative 9.8 meters per second square. I hope you get that. And then if you ever choose to say downward as positive, you should use positive 9.8 meters per second square on every question that follows there. Then uh, we are looking for delta T. So the formula that we have to choose, we can almost see uh, the perfect one will be this one, right? So the first one there. Then let's go. We have a uh, VF is equals to VI plus A and then delta T. Our VF is negative 3. Our VI 7.27 then here negative 9.8 and then we have delta t if we take this one transpose it over to the side that's negative 10.27 is equals to negative 9.8 delta t divide both sides by negative 9.8 then our delta t is equals to 1.05 seconds rounded off to two decimal places right so that's how you were supposed to tackle that question so a uh, can now see that the time in which it takes from uh, being thrown up until it reaches the balcony is 1.05 seconds right and then all that for a total of three marks okay so now we have 3.3 it says draw a sketch graph of the displacement of the ball for the entire motion use the ground as reference point so that means our zero level or our x-axis will be represent will be representing the ground right so that's what that means then clearly indicate the following on your graph note that this is five marks and this is where you'll be getting your marks so there'll be a mark for the, for showing the height from which the ball is released a mark for showing the maximum height that the ball reaches and then a mark for the height of the balcony a mark for the time that it takes uh, to bounce on the balcony then the fifth mark will obviously be the shape of the graph so have you drawn uh, the correct shape now this is a draw a sketch graph of the displacement if we are drawing the sketch graph for the displacement that means the graph that we have is a position versus time graph right 
then uh, let's use this space here so starting with our cartesian plane like that and then like this okay then okay now note that uh, the ball was thrown at an initial height of 1.3 meters and then it went up reached a maximum height of four meters so this is telling you a story guys then after reaching that maximum height it bounced at the balcony which has a height of 3.2 meters then after uh, reaching the balcony it bounces off the balcony and then reaches a certain maximum height which we were not told and then we are not even uh, required to indicate so it's just a certain maximum height which is lower than the first maximum height that has been reached according to uh, the diagram here now this is all that you got also we must indicate the time uh, for this journey here which we did calculate and then we found 1.05 so they will never ask you to put anything that you did not calculate or figure out then uh, this is what we are supposed to have so this is exactly what we are supposed to have then just like that so we can just try to use another color so that we visibly see the graph then yep yep so um all that's left now would be just to would be just to label the axis so you have time and then it's given in seconds here you have the position or you can say displacement it's given in meters and then you can go ahead and label your graph um i mean title your graph position versus time graph so this is the position versus time graph and then just like that you have everything that you need you have everything so uh, the five marks will be obtained from here so that's one two three four and then correct shape five right so that's how you were supposed to tackle this question guys so please press the thumbs up button if you have enjoyed the lesson and then you have found it helpful and then if you've been watching the videos and haven't subscribed please 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 press that the subscribe button but most importantly please share the link with your friends and classmates so that they may also find assistance remember do not be selfish we are winning as a team